Well, I saw this and I thought I would add a short addendum to my Fencing 101 video. This is why I don't buy used railroad ties anymore and use them for corners or braces. Uh, this is broke off and this just happened just within the last couple of days because I just shut this gate three days ago when I put the cows out into the big pasture. There's the, uh, that's the lane where the cows uh, come up. They traverse that to get from the big pasture up to the, uh, up to the buildings and to the pasture on the other side of the buildings. But this has been in about 20 years. I think about, probably about 20 years ago I put this in. For a time from about, oh, 10 to 20 years ago, I, I would buy uh, used railroad ties, decent looking used ones, you know, number one used railroad ties, and use those. I used a lot of those for corners and braces. But uh, over the last 10 years, I've had, I've seen about 10 or 12, 10 or 12 of, of them do that, uh, break off. So they are not, uh, they are not the forever solution that I thought they were. And these two, I would have put in at the same time. That one there seems pretty solid yet, but this one, this looks like it's starting to get a little shaky too. So I should replace both of these. So yeah, at this point in time, I can honestly say that I wish I had never used anything here for my brace posts or corner posts, but six inch pressure treated round posts. Now you can see those two, those two pressure treated round posts right there, they have been in there for 51 years. I know that because they were put in when the, uh, when the highway got changed here. The highway used to run on the other side of my buildings. This road got put in in 1969, and that's when those two pressure treated, treated posts got put in when this lane got built. So I know they've been here for 51 years. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm finishing up with the oats. That'll be another video. I'll answer a question someone asked in the comments a while back. Uh, as you can see, for about the last month or so, I was feeding the cows down here. Uh, that area there where they've been feeding is where I'm going to plant corn. Someone asked why or asked if I had ever considered just feeding the cows down here all winter long and just moving the feeders around and having them, having them eat where I was going to uh, have fields. And I could do that. But... Uh, the only place they can get water in the wintertime is in front of my house. And uh, so if I would feed them down here, they would have to go through that cattle chute there. That's how the cows go underneath the road. And on the other side of this cattle chute, on the other side of the road, there are about seven or eight concrete steps where they get up in order to get in that area up there. And I am just not comfortable with the idea of the cows having to navigate those steps all winter long. I'm just afraid they would get icy and uh, bad things would happen. So that's why I don't feed the cows down here in the fields all winter long. Although most of the time I do have them down here eating in March for a while. So I hope that answered that question. So now, uh, now I'm back to uh, get back to seeding.